Hey, thanks very much for having me. Really appreciate it, and this is a uh, a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Bacon is as well, and we'll get to that. But I think, um, you know, this this uh, you know, I think where this started, uh, Dave, and for thanks for everyone for joining us, is that uh, we were all at a Martech event here in Seattle, and uh, you know, a bunch of short presentations. And mine, this is mine. It was really about um, you know attribution, and uh, you know, we talk a lot about the various elements of a marketing technology stack that are execution related. Uh, but if you can't measure what's working and if you can't measure the impact of your now increasingly complicated B2B marketing efforts, then it's difficult to demonstrate your true worth into the organization. So, uh, you know, not a, t a long presentation here today. We're going to give you some, some ideas, some things to take back to your organization, some specific justification uh, points to take to your CFO to help fund some of those attribution investments that you need. Um, and um, and some other things. So uh, just as we get started, you know, speaking of bacon, um, you know, if uh, if you want a copy of this presentation, um, you know, feel free to you know email me. If it looks like a spreadsheet, I think we've got at least one in here. It probably is a spreadsheet, so happy to share that as well. Uh, I wrote a new book this spring called Full Funnel Marketing that is really about uh, sort of challenging marketers to think about the entire funnel to operate as a profit center and to really embrace revenue responsibility. So happy to share that or a copy of my last book, The Modern Marketer's Field Guide. And then speaking of bacon, uh, Dave, I, I am serious about this this bacon, and I don't have pictures in here of Copietti, which is the new, which is what we're trying now, which is basically um, it's cured and dry cured pork loin, which is also quite good. But the bacon, if you've never made your own bacon at home, I mean, seriously, you go to Costco, you buy a pork belly, you rub it up with some salt and sugar. And you leave it in the fridge for a week. I mean, that's as hard as making bacon is. The hardest part is waiting for bacon. And you put it over a little bit of fruit wood, and you get this delicious. I mean, who doesn't want to eat that, right? So, um, if you want to make your own bacon at home, it is incredibly easy. I'm happy to share with you my recipe for bacon. Uh, but let's actually make the transition now from bacon to beer. Uh, and and this is this is actually this is this is my uh, fancy weatherman TV weatherman transition. Because I, I, you know, from an attribution standpoint, I, you know, I, I think the, I am getting tired of seeing, and I know that the managers and leadership team for a lot of people listening are tired of seeing marketers report on activities. Most dashboards for marketing organizations focus on clicks and open rates and even marketing qualified leads. I would venture to say that your leadership team could give a crap about marketing qualified leads. And the problem with marketing qualified leads and the problem with most marketing metrics is that they are still activity focused and not focused on revenue events. The last time I checked, you cannot buy a beer with a marketing qualified lead. So I would challenge you from an attribution standpoint to start looking at the metrics that you're reporting for yourself as well as for the organization and put a greater focus on the metrics that you can buy a beer with. It's closed deals. Your metrics are the same as the sales team. You may have a different role in the revenue producing process than the sales team, but make no mistake, your goals are exactly the same. Now, this becomes a lot more complicated in the B2B world that we live in. Uh, you can't send an email and assume that that's going to drive a complex sale. I have not seen in a long time the fact that you let get someone to download a white paper and, and, and they close a deal. Like your six, seven, eight figure deals in enterprise B2B just don't happen that way. So it's far more likely that you're going to see deals come from a variety of sources, that your, that your marketing activity looks a little something like this, where you're managing these long, complex buying cycles which what's with, with what CEB now tells us, you know, at least 6.8, 6 to 7 plus people involved in the internal buying committee. So you've got multiple people involved. You've got months, if not you know, long quarters longer as part of the sales process. You've got campaigns that now include a variety of different tools and formats. So attribution becomes harder. It's not just about measuring what you can buy a bear with. It's about finding what works beyond just individual campaigns. I tend to find that of any given audience that you're marketing to, about 4% of that audience is actively seeking a product or service right now. They're actually seeking a solution. 46% of your market is poised. This is according to research uh, from a company called Voresight. 
And so if 46% of your audience is poised, you're marketing to an audience that has not yet made a commitment to move forward. So if they haven't made a commitment to move forward, they're engaging in your marketing and they're not actively in your buying process yet. But what of that marketing eventually pushes them over the line? What of that marketing helps them challenge their own internal status quo? Measuring this becomes a lot more complicated. The problem we have with marketing is that we want to measure the outcome, but the outcome is a small fraction of the process that we're actually driving people towards. Now, there's some fantastic tools in the market. I think, you know, Visible is clearly one of them. And if you haven't, again, I think, uh, Dave, this wasn't meant to be a commercial, but if you haven't, if you're listening, if you haven't seen Visible lately, um, you are missing out. It's a fantastic platform that provides a wide range of attribution insights uh, for marketers in, in, a, in, a, in a variety of different industries. But even if you don't have the precision that you need yet to provide the kind of reporting you want, I believe strongly that intent is more important than precision. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that what you want to be able to look at is how do we understand that our marketing is not transactional, that I cannot attribute leads back to that white paper, that I'm not going to assume I'm going to close a seven-figure deal because of one trade show we did, that most marketing you're doing is part of a broader process of motivating and qualifying and driving interest and attention and velocity and conversion from that prospect. If you work with an intent that your process is complicated, if you work with the intent that you're going to measure and justify and prioritize your marketing based on the revenue outcome, not the lead activity, you're moving in the right direction. If you are aligned with your sales organization, that is more important to me, the precision of measurement. If you've got the same goals, if you and Mark Sales agree on the right metrics, on the same metrics, the same definitions, the same target audience, the same general buying journey, you will neuter your ability to close more deals if marketing tells one story and sales tells another. So it's important that you've got, you're on the same page with marketing or same page with sales, depending on which side you're coming to from this, in this presentation. So a couple fundamentals, you start with one spreadsheet, right? One spreadsheet that says, here's how many deals we need to close, here's how big a pipeline we need to get there, and here's how many leads we need to feed into that. Measure your value as a marketer as low in the pipeline as you can get. Even if you can't see closed deal impact, ideally you can still see contribution to pipeline. So yes, you want to measure marketing qualified leads, you want to look at other tactics, and I'll talk about how to get there in a second. But I would highly encourage you to manage two dashboards, one that is operational and managed for marketing, the other is executive and indicates the output of your marketing efforts. I am, I am, I am optimistic as I hear more marketers towards the end of this year, as we record this, towards the end of 2016, I'm optimistic as I hear marketers describe their primary objective not as MQLs, but as a marketing contribution to pipeline goal. They're saying, well, our goal is to generate 30% of our required pipeline from marketing activity. Great. Again, talk about intent. If, the, if you're saying that your goal is not marketing qualified leads, but sales qualified leads, you've already made progress. You've already indicated that your goal is not lead volume, your goal is lead quality. Those can be one and the same, but they're usually different. So if you're managing to two different dashboards, you can say, look, it's still important that I get better open rates and click rates, but what's more important is that I don't, med I don't tell the leadership team that my focus as a marketing organization is opening click rates on individual emails when our sales cycle is 9 to 12 months, and it's far more complicated than that. There's a variety of – so there's a spreadsheets you can use to sort of measure this. Uh, this is looking at a quarterly basis saying, here's the leads we get in, and what can that contribute from a revenue standpoint. You can do this math – the reverse way and say, okay, here's how many sales I need, therefore here's how many leads I need, and you can do it on a monthly basis as well as quarterly basis. But I would encourage you to come up with this kind of math jointly with your sales organization. I mentioned as well the need for operational versus executive dashboards and the idea that you are going to measure your activity and optimize your tactics in an agile environment as a marketing organization but you're going to report to the company, you're going to report to the leadership team, you're going to report to your executive peers the impact of that effort. For far too long, I think marketing has operated as a cost center, has been perceived as a cost center. 
And I've seen many marketers get frustrated by this, yet fail to justify what they're doing, fail to put and position the work they're doing as profit center work. I've seen sales teams scramble and and crawl and 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 uh, grind at the end of the month and the end of the quarter to hit their number, and then the marketing team, though they say they're aligned with sales, is actually at the bar celebrating that they hit their retweet goal. I wish that was a joke. That's a real story. So that alignment often doesn't exist operationally, but it starts with your reporting. How are you measure? How are you, what's your intent? What are you reporting? How are you measuring the impact of that effort? How are you communicating in a variety of means the business and revenue impact of your marketing work? If you're looking for a way to justify some of this to your CFO, whether it's just simply to demonstrate the value you're providing as a profit center to the organization or trying to justify investment in attribution tools such as visible, a couple things or visible, so a couple things to look at. First is media replacement value. It's clear to me that content and technology is replacing media as the coin of the realm for marketers. This has been happening for a while. And so the compounding value of that, as you no longer have to buy media over and over and over and over again, but as you make more leverage investments in content and technology that has a more scalable, repeatable impact on the business, that media replacement value becomes real. You, you, you have the ability as a marketer to increase your contribution to pipeline while actually decreasing marketing spend as a percent of revenue, as a percent of the sale. Again, you have to change your mindset here a little bit as a marketer as well. You can no longer say, I am worth how much budget I have. Too many marketers historically have said they see their power, they see their influence based on how much budget they have. Budget is irrelevant. Pipeline performance, pipeline contribution is what matters. It's clear we're also seeing an increased investment in content marketing and some companies are able to see the increased ROI they're getting from that investment. Measuring that value at every stage and lead and opportunity stage, measuring the value not just as of, lead, of content that converts into leads, but the impact of content applied in the right place that can accelerate the velocity of deals. I've seen some of the right content at the right place significantly decrease closing time, increase conversion rates, but you got to be able to measure how well that works. And if you can do that effectively and you can increase your investment in content, that's still done in a leveraged way that decreases the amount of money your company has to spend on marketing overall. And last but not least, and this is not an, all, an exhaustive list. The you know, list goes on, but these are some of the ones I've seen work best with CFOs, is to demonstrate if you're doing account-based marketing or what we internally tend to call account-based revenue, because account-based marketing implies that account-based is all about marketing, and it's not. It's got to be a collaboration between sales and marketing. The account-based revenue applied effectively can lower your acquisition costs, can increase lifetime value because you're focused on the right customers. So your investment in technology and attribution software to focus on doing the right things that deliver revenue outcomes for your organization. Greater revenue, greater lifetime value, lower acquisition costs. You are speaking the love language of your CFO when you can communicate these benefits. So, Dave, I promised a very short, present, in, impassioned presentation, um, but uh, you know, I feel pretty strongly about sort of the way that you know marketers need to be thinking about you know revenue responsibility, thinking about attribution, and really, I mean, fundamentally shifting the way that they communicate their value and their contribution to the business moving forward and and and, sh and getting to the point where you can precisely measure that um, you know there we there may not be an end game in place as our marketing gets more complicated but our ability to get better at that certainly is key to demonstrating and justifying um, that shift